Good day, my plant foldies. Today we will be local plant nursery shopping at Green Acres Nursery in Irving, Texas. This is an exciting local plant nursery tour just because of the plant selection. This is my first time ever going here. And as always, if you're new to my channel, please make sure you are subscribing to my channel and please hit the like button as well as it really helps my channel out. But anyways, I am down in Irving, Texas checking out Green Acres Nursery. Um, I heard about this through a friend and I decided to go ahead and go down here to see what the, um, the clamor was in terms of how big this plant nursery is. I was told that they had a beautiful tropical area as well as an outdoor area. Today I'm just going to focus on just the indoor tropicals but as you can see right off the bat there are so many um, plant supplies we can see this cute little anthurium here on this little um, table they've got patio um, supplies they've got a lot of things and this is just the indoor part for all of their um, plant supplies it just reminds me more so of like a tractor area um, you know tractor plant supply but you can see that there are so many um, plant supplies that you can find we've got um, starter nursery um planters right over here you know those little greenhouse things and then we also have these jiffy pots to start your seeds out um, we've got different types of soil we've got rolling carts for larger plants and we've got patio decorations but it's really interesting that they have a, a variety of different types of soil um, they've got lawn decorations outdoor decorations and as i walk toward the um indoor nursery we can also see that they have a planting bar. So I guess that if you pick up a plant, you can get them to plant it in a planter of your choice. I really like that a lot. I think it's really interesting. And then you can see that they have that out, th those house plants right over here, which is where we're gonna go. We are now about to enter this paradise. And right off the bat, I am just greeted with some amazing, massive looking plants. Um, I don't even know where to begin. So we're just gonna go start from like side to side and, and see what this all looks like. But you can see they've got some modern planters, a ficus benjamina right over here. Very large ficus benjamina. Um, and then we have a epipremnum arium lemon meringue pothos right over here. This one is for $27.50, not a bad price at all for this pothos. And look at how nice the variegation is. It's definitely not a very subtle one. You can see that the yellow variegation is shining through. And then we also have an Epipremnum Panada on Baltic Blue and a six inch planter for $27.50. I already like the pricing of this um, plant nursery. I was um, I actually discovered this by just looking at my Instagram feed. I, I never knew that this plant um, nursery existed. And you can see that we have some large plants right over here. Look at how large that ficus lorata is. And I'm going to walk over here and you can see um, they've got a cinnamon tree right over here, a large ficus lyrata over here. It's giving me Plant Keeper Inc. vibes right now. If you haven't seen that video, it's another local plant nursery in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And then we have some large philodendron here. I'm not sure 100% what it is, but you can see that the price is not bad for such a highly developed philodendron so again i like showing you guys big box plant shopping tours but i want to show you the gorgeous local plant nurseries out in the dallas fort worth area look at this beautiful caladium Hilo beauty 32.50 not a bad price at all um, you can grow this potentially indoors but caladiums will typically go dormant um, grown indoors unless you can provide a lot of light and a lot of humidity and a lot of warmth so there's a lot of work that goes around gro growing caladiums indoors but i am actually tempted to buy this caladium Hilo beauty i may come back for it um the next time i visit because obviously just even the first impressions of this local plant nursery i am definitely going to come back this is one that i will frequent it is about a 35 minute drive from what um where I am based at in North Dallas, if I take the um, Dallas North Tollway, so it's not bad. And then you can see right over here, we've got some mounted air plants right here. That's really cool. And you can see that the, um, the roots have um, attached to it as well. Um, and you can see it is on just a plank um, with just a little hook right here. And this one's for $79. So you can see that um, the different types of ways to display 
air plants. I have yet to add an air plant to my collection, but it's one of those that I will be selective of and check it out. Um, I'm kind of struggling putting this back on. I want to make sure that I don't just leave a mess here. So we'll do that. But I am able to just look at all of these plants, show you this. So these are plants that you may not necessarily see at a big box store. Um, I am a big support of local plant nurseries just because number one the the quality of plants you will get are going to be much um, higher in health wise number two the, the diversity of plants that you will find and number three the people that you would end up meeting at local plant nurseries i was able to meet tanya and tyler super helpful um, people at this um, nursery and i can't wait to go see them again we had some really good conversations around plants how they go about their plant care here and just the history of um, green acres um, so I really like that what's even more interesting is they are gonna be opening up a second location which is gonna be in Melissa Texas which is again gonna be North Dallas so that's gonna be a little bit closer to where I am based at and you know we can see that um, the expansion is real I can see why they would be expanding just because of some of the plants they've already got and they even have um, just different types of plants and this is just like the first three to four feet like we are gonna definitely be looking at a lot of plants i already like the arrangement the diversity of plants the variety of plants um, i'm not sure what this um, plant is right here but this one's for 1350 in a four inch planter right here so if somebody can give me the plant id my plant foldies and if you're new to my channel i call my viewers and um, subscribers plant foldies um, let me know what that that plant id is or even just in the live premiere comments um, and this one right here is a variegated marantha for 2750 look at that nice looking variegated marantha i saw one on etsy actually that has a lot more pink on it um i may add that as well and then we have a syngonium albo i haven't seen a lot of these out in the market at least local plant nurseries now i know these are a little bit more accessible but these are for 55 dollars in a four inch planter luckily i was able to regrow mine um, mine actually reverted but i had a couple of cuttings that had some variegation and i was able to root it um, this is a vigorous grower, so it's not a, a hard syngonium to grow it grows like a weed so i'll be able to just create another pot full of them but that's a really nice um, syngonium elbow and then we have a variegated marantha as well so you can see that there is a cabinet with a bunch of anthuriums um, I will be able to open this up. I'm going to ask one of the employees. I'm going to either ask Tyler or Tanya. I think they offered for me to um, to open this up so I can film it and show you guys these anthuriums. I don't really grow a lot of anthuriums, but you know I will definitely check that and show you guys that. And then right over here we have another cinnamon tree. That's really cool. I've never seen one um, in person. And then we have a trade scanthia right here. So they've got a little bit of a wall with just different types of plants. We've got an anthurium that has mostly green blooms. Really cool with that. And then we have some um, um, Epipremnum alplissima right over there, the silver version. We've got a Cissus um, Discor, um, Discolor. Really like that as well. I remember um, growing one of these years back. Beautiful looking plant. I love the veining and also just the pink undersides of it. But um, Green Acres is definitely giving me a lot of good plants. And look at this, guys. Spider plants. I say plants because it's just one plant or actually two hanging baskets. But look at how massive they are. And they've got so many babies. Now, this plant is only for guess how much? $32.50 guys, $32.50 for this beautiful hanging basket full of spider plants. You can take, you know, a lot, like dozens and dozens of um, baby um, spider plants to propagate. So um, you want to head on over to Green Acres. Um, they do have an Instagram, so please make sure you guys are following that alongside my Instagram at Growfold. That is the fastest way to get it, uh, get a hold of me as well. So if you haven't already, please do that. But definitely check out their Instagram. They have a spring sale sometime in March of 2024. So check that out. And then we have another Dracaena right over here. We've got an assorted um, variety of ferns coming up right here. Um, so I will show you guys some of these plants, but I just want to pan over what I'm seeing first impressions. And you can see they've got a bunch of hanging baskets of ferns. You can see over there, they've got another um, spider plant. But I really like the symmetry that they have, the way that they, um, they merchandise their plants. It's very inspiring. It makes you want to pick up plants. It um, definitely will make you 
buy a lot of plants. Like I came here with the impression of potentially buying a specific alocasia, but, but I might end up actually buying more than just that. So we will see, but you can see right over here, look at this um, philodendron bilitiae right over here, a huge one actually. And I'm gonna pan over the price right here, but look at how gorgeous the orange stems are. And that is really not a bad price at all for a philodendron bilitiae um, for that size. So we are gonna go ahead and just look at this a little bit more closely. I am in the um, the market to buy a philodendron bilitiae. So you can usually find them um, at local plant nurseries for about $20 in a four inch planter. But if I'm gonna buy one, I might just buy one that's that size and bite the bullet because I want some more instant gratification. But you can see how massive this um, greenhouse is, how massive these alocasias are. And you can see that there are a bunch of anthuriums right over here. Um, these ones are in four inch planters and you can see these are for $13.50. Not a bad price at all. Actually, it's better than the pricing at Walmart, which is a big box store. So I might end up picking up an anthurium here. And then you can see that is an Alocasia cerion. So I remember seeing Alocasia cerion where they were like very small um, leaves, but look at how massive their leaves can get and how large they are. But Tanya and Tyler have given me exclusive access right now to go into the rare plant area. That one is typically locked right here, but they said that I can go ahead and film and just look at the plants. So I'm gonna take a look at these, pan over here. It's always amazing to see local plant nurseries carry rare plants. I, although it is unfortunate that they have to lock up rare plants, I can totally get it. When you have hundreds of dollars of rare plants, not everybody is always gonna be honest. And that's the sad part about the plant community is just be honest. Don't try to you know steal plants. Don't try Try to take cuttings from these rare plants admire them and save your money to buy them that is my motto for it like you need to make sure that you're being honest but you know that's that's the reality of the plant market there are some dishonest people out there and you can see right here though how they've um, been able to get all these rare plants that is a monster dubia growing up a pole and then i want to show you the pricing of this um philodendron florida ghost look at how large the leaves are look at how minty the leaves are i love how look at how large the, the leaves are now again with philodendron if you grow them up a pole a plank they will maximize in their leaf size and you'll actually see the true potential of their beauty i think a lot of people are not aware of that just because when you buy a, a house plant at a big box store they're definitely not on totems like this like these are philodendron pink princess but as you notice these philodendron pink princess are starting to get large in size because of the totem these ones are for a hundred dollars but you can see that these philodendron pink princess i don't think they're the tissue cultured versions that you would buy at a big box store these ones may not be tissue cultured so which means that they may be more of a hardy more um, durable plant and then right over here a gorgeous looking uh, monstera albo these ones are for 200 dollars. not a bad price at all for this large size of an albo and the thing about it is the variegation is really nice they've got a half moon variegation on all three leaves and then we have a philodendron right here not 100 percent sure what it is 37.50 it might be a philodendron sword de roy but i'm not 100 percent sure so just let me know in the plant comments and look at this philodendron orange um, marmalade this one's for 37.50 nice looking variegation love that it's got a neon yellow variegation with some subtle orange to it i want to actually get one of those philodendron at some point not today because i got to get my um plant budget up and then we've got some more monstera thai constellations right over here a really large one and then we've got another philodendron bilitiae we've got um some type of skin zapsis growing up a totem so that's really cool we've got another philodendron brantianum growing over there as well on a plank but that's a really cool um skin dapsis pictus um growing over there and we've got a philodendron micans growing up a totem as well and those leaves are starting to get large we've got a monstera stadliana or cobra as what costa farms calls it on a totem so those are starting to grow large and then we've got a philodendron heteracium cream splash really like that too i love philodendron heteraceums just because they're really easy to grow they can tolerate lower light conditions very easy to propagate and multiply but 
As you can see, we've got another Epiprem Num Gigantium Variegata. Um, this one is for $27.50. Actually, might consider getting one of those as well. I just really like the um, variegation on the leaves. And then we got another Philodendron Belitiae right over here. Gorgeous orange stems. And then I just love the large, narrow leaves that they have here. This would be a really good addition on like a high bookshelf or something of that nature just for the plant styling. And as you can see, Green Acres has some amazing rare plants. Um, they are, I was told that they are still going to get some more rare plants. So that's really cool. And you can see right here, a Monsera dubia, as it grows up a plant and attaches its aerial roots, the leaves get larger. And these can actually fenestrate as well, which is really exciting. Um, it does require some more care. So I don't really have a Monstera dubia, um, but this philodendron, Florida Ghost is one that I just can't stop looking at. Look at how large the leaves are. It's holding its minty um, leaf color. And you can see even the new leaf unfurling is a very bright ghostly color. So I like that. Philodendron Ghost, um, Florida Ghost. I really like that a lot. And look at that. It's, it's definitely got some ghostly vibes. Look at how light the leaves are as they come up. And this one is actually ready to unfurl. I just like how large the leaves are. Um, I definitely want to get this philodendron. I had one before, but ended up giving it to my friend, Garen, who actually manages the Plant Keeper Incorporated Plant Nursery. That's out in Dallas, um, tech, you know, uh, downtown Dallas, Texas. So definitely check that out. And then we have a philodendron, Jose Buono. Nice looking philodendron. I love how large the leaves are. And this one actually is a very nice looking variegated one. The variegation is pretty um, good on that. And then we have another philodendron Belitiae. Now we have a philodendron Thai, um, um, Thai um, Sunrise. I actually ended up getting one of these a long time ago, two to three years ago at a local, lo um, you know, big box store called Lowe's. Um, I ended up killing it, but it was actually being sold in a self-watering planter. So um, I was, I regret that I ended up killing that plant, but we also have some more Syngoniums right here. I love seeing rare Syngoniums available. Oh, I knocked this over. So I wanna make sure that I um, fix that before I do any more of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video for a second and make sure that I put them up. So they're back to normal. Syngonium Panda right over here. I love this variegation. Um, so here's the thing about Syngonium Panda. I bought one of these as a, um, a small little two leaf um, starter plant a couple of years back, like three years back for like $150. So um, that one is only like, I think 55. So it's not bad at all. And then right here, we've got a philodendron splash Gordon or a philodendron betaphylum um, molted. Really like the green on green variegation. And then this one is for $70. This is another bit of phylum that I want to go ahead and add to my collection at some point. They are, um, very vigorous growers so this would be easy to propagate um i am gonna wait for the price to go down a little bit but look at how gorgeous the um the variegation is it's got subtle variegation but enough variegation to where i would you know invest in that and then we have some more philodendron jose bonos now these i would buy in this size even though that the pricing might be a little bit more expensive um that's actually not a bad price for a fairly developed Jose Bona philodendron. Now with that one, it is, um, the variegation is actually, how do I put it? Ha actually influenced by not only light, but also the, the climate. So if it's a little bit warmer, it's going to have better variegation. And right over here, we've got some Homa Lamena, um, variegated Homa Lamena. So this one's a really nice one. This is another plant that I am going to add to my collection at some point. Um, this one is not a bad price at all. You can see that there is a little bit more um, subtle variegation. So if I were going to buy this Hoba Lemina, I would buy this one. They are the same price as well, but this one actually is has gotten um, some more of that Thai constellation speckling variegation. So I like that a lot about this Hoba Lemina. They've got a couple more available. So my um, verdict for um, Green Acres is they've already got so many plants, rare plants for good prices. Like this is another smaller version of a philodendron 
Jose Buono, this one is for $45. Look at how beautiful the variegation is on that. But again, if I'm gonna buy a Jose Bono because it's already growing up a totem pole, I would go ahead and buy the larger one for a little bit more of a price versus getting the smaller one right here. So you can see how the, how large the leaves will get and more mature the leaves will get once you grow it up on a pole. So can you imagine that this little four inch planter um, could grow as big of leaves as that? Now just remember you have to get it on some type of pole for it to climb and then right over here we have another jose bona for 45 dollars. this one is not as um dense in its foliage but look at how beautiful that variegation is and you can see that the leaves are starting to size up and yeah, it's just looking for a pole or something to attach on so that's really important when it comes to more of these rare plants giving them something to attach on is what actually gives them that um, natural vibe in nature and then for my hoya heads or my hoya lovers i'm going to show you a couple of hoyas right here I'm just gonna flash the plant IDs here and not attempt to say the um, plant IDs just because I'm not really good at the pronunciation, but you can see that these are beautiful. These are by Nest Tropicals. So with Green Acres, they actually source out to um, from different, di um, you know, like plant providers. So they get them locally, but you can see how beautiful these Hoyas are. These are actually on a trellis as well. Um, I haven't gotten into Hoyas. I only have two Hoyas so far. A Hoya Crimson Princess and a Hoya Crimson Queen. But you can see that there are a lot of Hoyas. I really like the leaf texture of Hoyas. They're very waxy and durable. Um, but you can see they've got different types of Hoyas right here. These are starter rarer ones. Um, so I don't know all of the plant IDs. I'm not really versed with Hoyas but you can see right over here this has got some gorgeous splashing going on um, and they've got they're in some well draining soils as well so for my plant foldies that grow hoyas or are into hoyas please give me plant um, care tips for hoyas how do you grow your hoyas i know a lot of people not don't necessarily grow hoyas for the leaves but more so for the blooms i have yet to get one of my hoyas to bloom but it'll be exciting to document that once they do and I'm just gonna pan over here again. There is a lot of rare plants here, um, but I wanted to just pan over and show you what um, else they have. And you can see they got some more um, Jose Bonas on totems right here, and you can see how large their leaves get. We've got a Philodendron um, Burly Marxi eye right over here. Um, this is a variegated one. So the only thing about this Philodendron is it easily reverts. I actually had one. I have one growing in Lekka and there is some variegation. So I might just cut some of the variegated leaves off or with the nodes and see if I can propagate and get another um, variegated one. But mine for the most part has um, pretty much reverted. And then we have a silver imidrium medium right here, just a juvenile form. I have three cuttings of that that I'm still waiting for it to really fully establish. And I will grow that on a totem. And then we have some type of philodendron. Um, I think this is a philodendron ring of fire that is a little bit more sun stressed. And we've got a variegated Monsera Adansonii Aurea that is super cool for $160. But look at that. I love the yellow and the green on green variegation. Gorgeous looking uh, Monstera Adansonii Aurea. I might be getting one of these as well from a local um, plant seller in my area, but I really do like that a lot. Um, Monster Adansonia are easy to propagate as well. So those are um, plants that even though it is $160, I might end up buying it, but I might just wait a little bit more on the plant pricing to go down. Um, it has been proven time and time again, when you wait like a year or two, plant pricing starts to go down because they're more readily available. And you can see right over here, this is more readily available. This is a Mon uh, Monster Escal it's like the large leaf form of a monster adansonia they get very large and wide leaves super cool i know that costa farms recently released a bunch of those to buy online i missed out on it but i might end up getting one of those eventually and you can see that they have just so many rare plants. And again, this is just a small section of what we're about to see. So I hope you guys are gonna continue to stay tuned and look at all of these plants. You won't wanna miss the end of this video because there are some amazing plants that we will be looking at. And if you've gotten this far already and haven't gotten a chance to do so, please make sure you guys are um, hitting the like button for my video and all of my other videos. Leave comments just because that really creates engagement with YouTube, which means you 
YouTube will push my um, content to even more plant lovers like yourself. I would love to see our plant community grow so that way we can show more people these beautiful philodendron Florida ghosts, for instance, and just, you know, all of these rare, uncommon plants. Um, I do enjoy all of you guys tuning into the live premiere chats. Um, I will be going to Austin, Texas tomorrow to um, film a bunch of local plant nurseries there. But as you can see, we are going to go ahead and look at the um, plant cabinet right over here. So this is another anthurium here. I'm just going to show you the plant IDs. So I always find it interesting to find these anthuriums, especially being grown in a cabinet. And this is also locked up. So thank you to Tanya and Tyler for giving me access to just show you guys um, these anthuriums. I've never seen these in the in person, so it's really exciting for me as well to see all of these. These are for $30, for instance. I'm just gonna show you the plant IDs on um, the actual plant versus putting them in the subtitles, but you can see how gorgeous this one is right here. These are by Woohoo Tropicals, which is basically a plant nursery seller out in Houston, Texas. I really like that they are so stout. They've sourced out different types of plants from local um, Texas nurseries. And then this one right here, I actually would love to get this anthurium. This is a anthurium dock block just because look at the veining and then just the satin finish on the leaves. Really like that a lot. Anthuriums don't really like me. They're a little bit more finicky of a plant. So a couple of things about anthuriums is you would definitely need high humidity you probably need to grow it in a cabinet. Not only does it need high humidity, it also needs um, like a fan for like the air circulation to grow. Otherwise, they will they will also get mushy and just die. But I've never seen this a Skindapsis Jade Satin Variegated, seventy five dollars. So I would love to get a hold of one of these, like even just a one leaf, one node cutting, or I might just um, bite the bullet and buy that one as well. That's not honestly, that's not a bad price at all. And then right over here, we have another. Um, this one is a Monstera Burley Marks Flame for $150. These are a hot commodity as well. Um, I would love to be able to get that. This is, um, you know, the more mature ones obviously are going to cost a lot more money. I'm curious to see when the, the plant pricing will go down for both this plant right here love the Aurea variegation though on this Skindapsis. It's just a little bit slower growing and I also love a Monstera Burley um, uh, Marks Flame. $150 for this 4 inch planter. Um, that's not a bad price at all if you want a starter plant. I mean these will grow fairly quickly so it's not a bad price at all. Um, but you can see that they do have all of these beautiful anthuriums here. So my plant folies, I know that most of you guys just buy, you know, typical common house plants, possibly at big box stores. But if this is your first time being exposed to different um, uncommon and rare plants, definitely take a, a look at these plants. Consider adding them to your house plant collection. They might be slightly more pricey, but these are plants that you may not always see at a big box store unless Trending Tropicals, Costa Farms releases them. And you can see right over here is a mature Epipremnum panatum Cebu Blue Pothos. Um, so these ones you would actually see in a hanging basket at a big box store with smaller leaves. This is what happens when you let a um, plant grow up a totem. It will start to get large leaves and fenestrate. So that's so exciting to be able to see that. And then we have a bunch of Philanopsis orchids. I still can't get over the fact that I am seeing such a large Alocasia right over here. That is an Alocasia cerion. Look at how large the leaves are. And you know what's even more interesting is the price. Can you guess how much the price is? It's only $150 for that large Alocasia. So if I had the space for it, I would definitely buy it. But there is no way I'd be able to fit that in my home. And then um, right over here, we've got a bunch of um, Philanopsis orchids. I love how they got Philanopsis orchids and theriums kind of just um, all around that beautiful Alocasia. I love the merchandising of this um, plant nursery so far. Um, I noticed when I um, walked in, a lot of the um, plants are in different tables, but the plants are different species, or if they're not different, you know, or not different species, similar species, and also the plant care tips are very similar. So that makes it easier for maybe people that are not as versed with the plant care. Um, their staff definitely will in educate you about plant care tips, and they'll give you, um, they will steer you in the right direction of what type of plants you have. So I really like the level of service they have at Green Acres. Definitely a very approachable, um, staff and i love that a lot i think not only is um 
you know, the quality of plants that you get at a plant nursery important, but also the a level of service that you receive. So, you know, in retail, if you have good service, you're going to get good, um, loyal um, customers. And I really like that a lot. I am going to definitely be one of those um, customers that will make the drive down here to see what kind of plants they have because right off the bat, they've got rare plants. So that gives me um, some inspiration to save some money to get some more of these rare plants. And then we can also just look at the green foliage. You know, I make these one hour plant um, shopping videos. This one's going to be a little bit longer. So I hope you guys stick around with me just so I could show you guys plants. Like sometimes going to a local plant nursery, it's all about that plant therapy. Just even looking at greenery and plants is really good for anybody's like mental health. So I'm so excited about that, um, just to be able to share that with you. So I hope you guys get that vibe where you and I are just walking together at Green Acres and just enjoying the plants together. Obviously leave some comments about what plants you like. Um, if you, you think that I should buy this um, Caladium Halo um, right over here, just because look at how gorgeous the, the leaves are. I love that variegation. And then we have some more plants right over here. This one is um, for $25. I like that a lot. And we've got some bromeliads right over here. So, you know, bromeliads, again, like I said, will appear anywhere, a big box store, a grocery store, a beautiful local plant nursery like this one there's always going to be a bromeliad and then right over here look at this gorgeous monstera thai constellation that's just kind of like you know randomly put here um, right next to that epiprenum panata um, um cebu blue that's super cool i love love seeing um fenestrated plants i love mature plants like this um monstera thai constellations you know it was um, three to four years ago, that was a rare plant. And now you can really just see them at plant nurseries at a decent price. And you can see right over here at this first table, they've got a lot of Epipremnum, um, Arium. And then we also have this massive Philodendron Belitiae. And this one's actually in bloom. It's actually happy. So it'd be interesting. I've never tried to grow, um, you know, aeroids or anything um, you know, philodendron from seed, but that might be something I would like to visit in the future. So let me know if you've done that before, because that would be interesting to see if I could grow them from seed. But you can see that there are lots and lots of philodendron right over here. And look at this really cool Japanese um, stoneware, $70. That's actually a good price for that lantern. I would love to add that to my Japanese garden outdoors. I have a Japanese garden that I'm growing. And then right over here, we have some Florida greens, philodendron Florida greens. $9.75 is not a bad price at all for a four inch planter of Florida greens. And the thing about it is this is actually a fast, vigorous grower for um, a philodendron, especially since it's just all green. And then look at this. I actually might end, end up getting this um, plant for $20. We've got a philodendron Milano Chrysum. Really like that a lot. Um, it's got, it's basic, it reminds me basically of like a philodendron Mykins, but just a larger leaf form that um, you can actually get even larger if you grow that on a totem pole, a moss pole. Um, so that's another wishlist plant that I might come back to and buy at Green Acres. And then another reason why I would encourage any local plant um, foldies that are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area to go to this plant nursery. Number one, obviously the staff like Tanya and Tyler are amazing. They are super friendly. But number two, for these rare uncommon plants, they are not, they are not only priced well, they are also super healthy. So instead of having to go to like an online plant shop and getting, you know, buying plants and then, you know, you could get one for $20, but then you have to pay the shipping you can choose your plant in person. So that is why I'm gonna definitely make this one of my premier um, plant nurseries to buy uncommon plants. I would say their plant pricing is definitely um, fair, if not very cost effective for these rarer plants. Like that one right here is for $20. Now, I don't know what this particular philodendron is. Um, it's um, interesting though, just because the leaves are a little bit more serrated. So if you know what this philodendron, um, um, plant ideas, please leave that in the comments. I would love to know, but you can see that there was like philodendron gloriosums. We've got another philodendron um, bilitia right over here. We've got a smaller philodendron bilitia. That one's for $20. And then when you pan over here, they've got an um, um, aglonema table. 
So you already know if you are a regular viewer of my channel, I love Aglonema and I actually wanted to buy this particular Aglonema at another local plant nursery called Callaway's. But this one has is as much larger and you can see that there is some faint um, veining on the leaves. I just love the silver foliage. Love aglonemas, one of the easiest plants to grow and they can get large, but check this out. This is only for $40, such a large looking aglonema. This must be like three feet tall. And you know, with this size aglonema, the only drawback about, you know, aglonema is they are slower growers. So this would have taken quite a bit of time to grow this large. So I am definitely gonna buy this aglonema. I'm not even gonna fight myself and say, you know, I'm not on a no plant buy just because they've got large um, specimens right here their pricing is actually as good as Callaway so that's exciting as well but you can see right over here this one is a really thick looking um, aglonema I don't know if this is an aglonema lady madonna or white rain but look at the um, the variegation on the stem so it's got white stems with a little bit more variegation um, this was another plant that I would buy as well but I am more partial to the other aglonema the first one I saw I'm not 100% sure what that aglonema plant ID is so if anybody knows or can find out please leave that in the comments timestamp it and you can see there is another one right here but this one's a smaller version same price so for $40 so I'm definitely going to get the taller version super excited that I was able to find that for such an amazing price but I am just so excited that I found um green acres and like look at this this is for $37.50 this is another aglonema um Tri I think this is an Aglonema um, tricolor pictum, or I think that might be is I'm gonna just have to make sure that I get the plant subtitle for that. That is a rare plant that you cannot find, and actually that is not a bad price at all. So I'm really excited about that. They've got some um, Diefenbachia also mixed in here. This one's for $15.50. This is a Diefenbachia sparkle, so this is a smaller version of it. You can find the bigger um, versions at a big box store like Walmart. Those are uh, massive. Um, you know, they, they are actually produced, but I can't get over the fact that I was able to find an aglonema um, tricolor pictum. Very nice looking aglonema. I actually was thinking about getting this today, but I might hold off just because there are already two plants that I'm wanting to get. You know, I'm already blowing my budget on that, but I'll know where to find that instead of having to either import it or actually buy it. I can now just find it 35 minutes down the road from where I am based at. So I'm really excited about that you can see this one is a homolomena that's just a little bit more dehydrated a homolomena um camouflage this one is not bad at all as well for the price 1350 so i am definitely going to add some homolomena to my collection you know i panned over earlier there was a, ho a homolomena shelby but they have the camouflage i'd rather get the camouflage right now because you i can find homolomena shelby at a big box store i know live trends releases that at like lows i've seen it at lows so i will hold off on getting that particular homolomena but you can see we've got some more aglonemas here we've got some aglonema spring snows beautiful looking aglonema but you can see this one right here is a homolomena um, camouflage this one is for 1350 honestly i should have just picked this one up it's an easy to care for plant some people say they are finicky you just need to make sure that you stay on top of the watering and then just also the humidity levels are up to par and then right over here i'm not 100 percent sure what this aglonema is but what i am 100 percent sure of is i love it and this is for 20 dollars um love pink plants i love that um, aglonemas have a lot of varieties of plants and look at how highly variegated these plants are you know what's even more exciting is aglonemas um, are um, very low light tolerant plants they can tolerate low light but you won't get the best um, beauty out of it unless you give it bright indirect light um, you can see right over here is it looks like an aglonema this is um, an, a diefenbachia so that one is a diefenbachia sparkle and then right over here we have another rare or uncommon Diefenbachia. This is one I would actually add to my collection. This is a Diefenbachia reflector for $20. This one would be a manageable size for me. I haven't really seen large versions of this being sold. Um, that is another wish list plant that I would like to add. I like this Diefenbachia not only because of the variegation, but the leaf texture. It's got a velvety um, tone to the leaf. Um, so I would love to add this, not today, but it's one that I would definitely look out for at um, Green Acres. Um, I would definitely need to have a particular plant budget 
um, before I come back here just because I could easily sell, you know, see myself, sell, you know, spending hundreds of dollars. I don't want to do that to myself. And I also don't want to just add all of these plants that I may not necessarily have the plant um, time to take care of them. But right over here is a beautiful aglonema. This one is for $27.50. Not bad at all. This one is an aglonema etta rose. I love aglonema etta rose because it's got a pastel pink um, tone about it. Now, I did find this at Kroger for, I think, $13.99. So I may end up just getting that at Kroger versus getting it here. But nonetheless, um, it's a beautiful looking aglonema. Love the pink on it. Um, again, my plant foldies and viewers watching this, if you haven't already, I would highly encourage growing aglonemas. I think they are such an underrated plant. If you were to like Google search um, hybrid aglonemas, you will see a lot of like Indonesian plant pages, Indonesian I IG or Instagram pages that have such gorgeous varieties of aglonemas. And then right over here, we have another aglonema. This is a golden papaya. So this one is for $22.50. Um, this one is um, actually mass produced by Costa Farms. You can see these um, by Trending Tropical. So you can find these typically at Lowe's or other big box stores. And then I want to show you this um, Homa Lamena um, Shelby. This one's for $22.50. It's not a bad price at all. Honestly, it's a little bit more full than the... Um, Homa Lamena that I find at a big box store like Lowe's. So that is another plant I may end up just adding to my houseplant collection. Again, I need to just do a little bit more research for the um, Homa Lamenas. They're tempting to get, but at the same time, I need to make sure that I have the right lighting conditions, humidity levels, all of that good stuff. But you can see they've got a beautiful table of aglonema. Really satisfied that they had that um, available for us to take a look at. And then you can see right over here, this is another Caladium Halo Beauty of uh, Halo Beauty. Look at that. And just looking at it from the um, the bottom view from their canopy, it's really nice. Love that a lot. They um they look it looks like they trimmed down some of the maybe older leaves, but um what I like about Caladiums is they actually reproduce quickly. So you can get more bulbs and um actually get more caladium. I may end up buying this. This would be a plant that I would have to grow in, you know, outdoors. They're just easier to grow. Same thing with alocasia, but I think caladiums are a lot more finicky and needy as compared to alocasia. And then obviously right over here, they've got a beautiful um, dr um, Dracaena lemon surprise. This is one that you will always see at local nurseries as well, but it's another underrated plant. And then we've got a philodendron heteraceum lemon lime right over here look at how gorgeous that yellow leaf is i love that but this is what i was i came here for this is i believe an alocasia nebula so remember how i mentioned that i was thinking about getting an alocasia nebula at walmart by growers bench for 17 um something something Look at how large this Alocasia Nebula is. And can you um, imagine how much the price is over here? The price is only $45. So like why spend $17.74 for a smaller plant when I can get a highly established developed Alocasia at Green Acres? So that's the thing about lo supporting local plant nurseries. Sometimes it could be a little bit more pricey, but that I already had to put it in my cart. I wasn't going to let somebody take it. That is exactly why I wanted to go to this nursery because I saw a picture of it and I am glad that I was able to find it. And then right over here, this is my first time actually seeing this. We've got a hanging basket of philodendron betaphylums. And then we've got other philodendrons right here, heteraceums. And then we have some more epipremnum panatums right here, variegated ones on totem. So we'll take a look at that. But I want to pan over here and show you guys all of the epipremnum arium or pothos. So the first one up, gorgeous looking yellow leaves. These ones are... Um, the neon pothos right here in a four inch planter not a bad price at all for it as well i think it's for like nine um, 970 and then right over here this was actually very uncommon um and some people may like it some people will not be into it they may not pay for the price but this is an epipremnum arium emerald or um emerald pothos so the thing about emerald pothos is and this is for only 775 not bad at all i actually might consider buying this is um, emerald pothos it's all about the subtlety so global green pothos has more very you know stark 
um, green on green variegation you can see that but you can see this is a little bit more subtle honestly it's more of like a reverted um, enjoy which is what we're going to be looking at right here enjoy though pothos is one of my favorite pothos because i love not only the price is bad not bad at all 975 for this you can see the um, green and um, white variegation contrast it's very high i like that a lot but as compared to obviously the emerald pothos that has more subtle green variegation and then right over here we've got some golden pothos and um this is another one that is probably one of the easiest plants to ever take care of and this one's already trailing this one's for 775 that's not bad at all for this golden pothos if you are new to house plants if you find a pothos plant please make sure you go ahead and start out with the pothos plant it will give you more confidence to be able to grow house plants and i really like that for people the thing is Whenever some people start um, growing house plants, they may get a, t a difficult plant and kill it, and that just is more discouraging. So start off with easy care plants. Here is an actual gorgeous looking Epipremnum Arium Lemon Meringue Pothos. Look at that. Look at that um, variegation. It's very much um, prominent, and that's the thing that you will run into with um, Epipremnum Arium Lemon Meringue is this one's actually not bad at all to $27.50. I would buy this one particularly just because of the variegation. Now to encourage more of that um, variegation, give it a lot of bright indirect light and you will be rewarded with some really amazing variegation. And look at this one right here, this totem for an Epipremnum Panatum um, variegated one and it's already started to size up on its leaves. I have a bunch of cuttings of these that have actually been in water for a while. This one is for $55, not bad at all. I would honestly buy it just because I like the look of it. And I could actually cut up some of those leaves that are already um, trailing down because it's already maxed out on the pole, but that's really cool. And then right over here, we have a Marble Queen Pothos growing up a totem. And you can see that the leaves are starting to get large as well. Love the totem situations. Um, I have one that I actually grew from cuttings and they're growing up a pole. They're starting to get large and lush as well. But that's the thing. Those hanging baskets, those starter plants that you see at a big box store, you know, they don't ever really have them at on totems. But when you grow them on totems, the leaves will start to get large and they I, I feel like they look more beautiful growing up a pole versus trailing. Like this one right here is an Epipremnum Panatum Cebu Blue for $9.75. Not a bad price at all. Um, you know, where I'm from, I'm from the Philippines. These pretty much grow like weeds. They're from the island of Cebu. And you can see this is a mature version. This Epipremnum Panatum right over there in the background is what it looks like in the wild when it's allowed to grow up a tree. And then this is what we see at a, at a big box store, the juvenile form. So. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you like the smaller version or do you love the beautiful fenestrations? Honestly, I love the big, beautiful fenestrations. I think they're gorgeous. And then this one right here is a Scandapsis um, Trubrii Moonlight. Beautiful looking one. And by the way, all of these plants that I just pulled up, guess where they were sourced from? They were sourced from Canada. So I have a lot of plant foldies from Canada or um, Canadian viewers that mention they don't have a lot of plants, they, their plants are not available in big box stores, more so local plant nurseries. I am still baffled at the fact that I have all of these plants. This whole table has a bunch of plants that were sourced out from Canada. So I'm not sure if they're just hoarding it to send to Dallas, Texas or Irving, Texas, but that's just really interesting. A lot of these plants actually are sourced from Canada of all places. So they're not all from um, Florida, which is where you would assume most of these tropicals are. So I just find that interesting. Please leave in the comments what you think, why these plants are sourced out in Canada. Um, but I thought of all of my Canadian plant foldy. Shout out to you guys. Thank you guys for always tuning into my live premiere chats and just engaging with me every single day. And then right over here, we've got a philodendron um, painted lady for $20. That is not a bad price at all. And the variegation is quite stunning for sure. As you can see, there are several other philodendron available here. We see another um, philodendron heteracium on a trellis, actually. Beautiful looking one. This is the Brazil, and you can see it is on a trellis. I haven't ever seen one of these before, but you can get one of these at Green Acres. So I really like the look of that. And that's the thing about plants and how you grow and display them. There are very um, different ways of um, displaying them. And then right over here, we've got another totem of some philodendron micans. Love the velvety leaves. 
And then we've got some squammy ferrum right here, some philodendron squammy ferrum. I have one growing, but these are nice and lush as well. So um, this is definitely a great, um, rare, uncommon haven to go to as, a, as far as a local plant nursery in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Like right over here, we have a philodendron moonlight for $27.99. Nice looking philodendron moonlight. Um, and I just like how they do have all of these plants bunched up together um, with similar care tips, similar lighting conditions. Really like that. And I was really happy to have met um, Tanya and Tyler. They were very accommodating um, as well as just letting me film here. And you can see they've got fairy garden um, figures for our fairy garden. So I like this little setup right here. If you want like a miniature garden or just a fairy garden, here it is. And then over here, we've got a beautiful um, ficus triangularis. Um, look at that. This is the variegated form. And you can see that it is absolutely stunning as well. This one is actually very lush and full. Sometimes with ficus, if they're not happy, they will definitely drop their leaves. And look at the price for this. This is for $69.50. Not a bad price at all, considering that it's already about three and a half feet tall, um, growing up like a bamboo pole. But I love the variegation of this. I would love to add this to my um, plant collection, but I don't have nearly as much light to give it with any ficus plant. And I've said this on multiple videos, you've really got to give it some bright indirect light. This one can be very finicky as well, but I do love the variegation on it. And then right over here, we are still looking at some Epipremnum arium. We've got some hanging baskets right over here. This one is a hanging basket of Monstera Peru look at this it's super full super lush it's trailing and it makes me want to buy this one as well i don't have this um plant in my house plant collection it's one that i am wanting to add and then look at this full basket of monstera celtipicana a nice lush full one as well and this one's for 32.50 not a bad um actual hanging basket full of monstera celtipicana i have a one that is growing in a three inch um, potted up planter but this one is a full-on hanging basket and you can actually cut this up and get a lot of propagations um, that is another plant that i love um, it reminds me of like a pothos or even a heteracea but it is a monstera and obviously we want to look at this beautiful philodendron heteracea lemon lime or philodendron heteracea neon however you want to call it love the yellow neon leaves definitely can open up a bright um, space and if you pan out over here look at this so gorgeous and then right over here is a unique philodendron, not philodendron, sorry, philonopsis orchid on a trellis. You see how they have the blooms just on a circular um, trellis. I really like that a lot. What a um, unique way of displaying a philonopsis orchid. And then we haven't even gotten a lot through the other um, tables, but you can see here, this is the monstera table where they've got different types of monstera. So we're going to take a look at this. We've got the classic monstera deliciosa right over here. Nice looking monstera deliciosa. And then we have a monstera adansonii right over here. This one growing up a pole is for $50. And you can see that the leaves are starting to size up in its size. And then we've got some more monstera um peruse right over here look at that and that look at that um the texture on the leaves i really like that a lot that again is one of the monsters that i definitely want to add into my collection and you can see we've got some more monstera deliciosas right over here it's definitely a classic house plant and i think everybody should grow monstera deliciosas the only thing is you have to be careful with the space because they do grow very large and then I'm going to go pan over here. So this is the Anthurium um, shelf. Um, there might be some Anthurium um, plant IDs, but I'm not very versed with Anthuriums. I did just want to show you the different types of Anthuriums. Like right over here, we've got a beautiful Anthurium vicii. This one is for $45. Look at how beautiful the leaf is. Now with Anthuriums, they are a little bit finicky and a little bit more of a more like um you've got to have some experience growing some indoor house plants they're not um easy a lot of people actually grow them in cabinets with a lot of high humidity and a fan this one is for 70 dollars 
right over here here's another beautiful anthurium so for those that love anthuriums let me know what you think about them like if you let me know about like the care tips let me know in the live premiere chats what um anthurium you are growing or if you grow anthurium i don't have any type of anthurium growing in my collection except the blooming ones um i ended up getting one actually from this um, plant nursery and converting it into hydroponics but you can see this one doesn't have a plant id this one's for 27.50 but look at how beautiful the veining on the leaves are it's got a bronze look about it and then we have some more anthuriums right over here um i am very impressed with green acres so far just because of the diversity of plants they have they've got rare plants uncommon plants um common plants and just very priced like very cost effective pricing like i really think that for anthuriums they aren't um over you know pricing them actually a lot of the plants are very cost effective like i don't think any of their plants are overpriced at all honestly i think that they are either underpriced for what i've seen at most local plant nurseries which is actually really exciting because you're getting healthy looking plants but you're also getting healthy looking plants for a really good price so if you are in the dallas fort worth area i would highly recommend going to the green acres and what's interesting is for my canadian plant foldies again can you believe that a lot of these plants are actually sourced from canada so i know you canadians have said that you don't have as many plants but for some reason this plant nursery has a lot of diverse plants available for us in the dallas fort worth area so I feel very lucky but you can see that there is a shelf full of like starter anthuriums I eventually may put anthuriums into my houseplant collection again it's more of just making sure I have the time and space to take care of them and then right over here we've got another um, table full of um, different types of plants with similar care tips now these ones are what you call the two inch starter plants. so I'm just going to show you a couple of ones we've got some tread scanthia nanook right over here this one is for 350 look at how cute that is and that would actually grow very fast so you can get one of those starter plants grow it up and you'll be able to propagate it and actually have a full plant and then right over here we've got some philodendron snowdrift this one is for 20 dollars. now this is the only um, plant that i would say is a little bit priced high but overall like i think it's a good plant to to good into put into your collection a philodendron snowdrift mine is doing very well it's starting to really grow and you can see that they've got some calathea or Orbifolias right there. We've got a Rex begonia right over here. Really like the color of this one. This is one that you will actually see a lot of big box stores. I wish there was a specific plant ID for this begonia, but nonetheless, it is a beautiful looking begonia. And then we just have a bunch of other starter plants right here. You can actually have a, um, a terrarium. And this is a really cute looking Calathea um, white star. One of my favorite Calatheas, it's actually one of like three Calatheas I have in my houseplant collection. And then right over here, we've got another beautiful Calathea or Orbo Orbifolia. Right over here, this Calathea Orbifolia is gorgeous. Look at that. It looks like somebody just painted on those leaves. And you can see that this table has some Tradscanthias. We've got some hanging basket of um, Calathea fish bones right over here. Um, love that. I definitely wish I would have bought that from Home Depot, but the ones that I've seen at Home Depot now are not looking so hot. So, you know, I missed my chance on getting that. And then we've got some different types of begonia. So I'm just gonna show you the begonia plant ID. This one is for $20, so I'm assuming this is some type of uncommon or rare begonia. But look at those beautiful blooms as well. Those pink blooms are really nice. Love the green veining of it. And then we've got another Rex begonia here, a very nice red Rex begonia. And then I've never seen this type of begonia here. Um, this one is some type of begonia. They've got the plant ID here. Look at how beautiful this begonia is. It's got some subtle um, patterns on its leaves but i like that a lot begonias are starting to really grow on for me i i would love to add some begonias and you can see right here i'm kind of struggling to get this begonia out but look at this one this one actually caught my attention this one's for 1350 this is a begonia borrelii i like the variegation on the leaves and then the yellow um flowers are really nice as well it's got a very unique look about it as well 
and then we've got a bunch of begonia macolata so these are you know what you would see at a big box store love the polka dots on the begonia macoladas right here this one is for $27.50 in a six inch planter. So similar to what you would see for Costa Farms Training Tropicals. However, I do feel like these begonias would be a better bet um, to buy versus getting it at say like a big box store just because they look super healthy. And then we've got some smaller um, Stramanthi Trio Stars for $9.75. Look at the undersides of the leaves, the, the top of the leaves, very um, beautiful. And there's just a lot of color interest. Not a bad price at all for a four inch planter. It's a nice starter plant if you want a Stromanthi Trio Star. Their care is similar to Calatheas. And then we've got a lot of um, Calatheas right over here that are available to purchase. We've got a hanging basket of um, vanilla plants right here. I like that a lot. You can see all of the aerial roots. And what else do we have here? We've got some Calathea medallions. Look at the undersides of the leaves. This one's for $13.50. Not a bad price at all for a Calathea medallion. Um, Calatheas are gorgeous, but again, they're always gorgeous when you look at um, Calatheas when they're actually housed um, in a nursery, but it depends on the care tips. This one was grown in Canada. So here is another Hedra Helix, guys, or a Hedera Helix. This is another English Ivy that was sourced out from Canada. You've got a couple right over here. I do love um, English Ivy. It's just one of those plants again for $4.50. That is really a good price for an English Ivy. Um, I just wish they were just not spider mite prone. They would be much easier to grow. But you can see, look at this um, table right over here with lots of different types of plants. And now we're going to pan over here and you can see that huge Spathophyllum or Peace Lily. I like that a lot. Those leaves are really gorgeous and look at how large they are. I love the, um, the texture of the leaves. And then right over here we've got a Spathophyllum um, Domino. So that's a variegated Peace Lily. And then we just got a regular peace lily right over here for $7.75. Not a bad price at all. And with peace lilies, again, they can tolerate very low light conditions. And um, the only thing is for their care, they are very thirsty plants. So you just have to make sure that you are watering, watering them regularly. And then we've got some more plants right here. So this is a whole section of just um, air plants. And they've got like air plants accessories, air plant planters. Like look at how cute those um, containers are for air plants. And they've just got an assortment of air plants here. So if you're into air plants, Green Acres has it for you. You can hang them up, you know, put them on a shelf. And you can just choose from a variety of different types of air plants. They are labeled. Um, some of them start off as um, $4.50. But you can see there are plenty of air plants. But this is the one I really like. And I would love to add to my houseplant collection at some point. Um, very nice looking one. Let me see if I can find the price of this particular um, air plant. This one is for $24.50. Um, not a bad price at all. It's already a large looking one. And with air plants, to just they don't really require a lot of water. And if you are going to water them, you just soak, soak them in water for a little bit, pull them out, and they are good to go. And then we are looking at it, um, some more massive alocasia right here. So this is the alocasia table. And I am really liking me some alocasias. They haven't um, really been bad for me in terms of just the care. They're doing very well for me. And you can see right here, look at how large these alocasia stingray. I've never seen an alocasia stingray this large, but um, that is massive. And I really love the look of these alocasia as well. Alocasia stingray. And then we've got an alocasia cerion right over here and you can see for this one this is only 150 for such a large alocasia and then we've got another alocasia um stingray right over here love the look of these alocasias very beautiful looking alocasia and it's one that i am growing personally in my collection and you can see that there are some baby corms growing in that large um, pot um, the thing about alocasia is they do require a lot of humidity. They are spider mite prone. You don't want to overwater them and you also don't want to um, underwater them. So there's just a lot of care to it and they can go dormant if it gets too cold in your home or they don't receive enough um, bright and direct light. So just be mindful when you are growing alocasias. I'm not really a pro at it and I feel like with this year and you can see look at all of those corms or those babies popping out. 
I feel like I think those are alocasia low riders growing in there. But um, the thing about alocasia, I think variegated alocasia are going to be the it plants for 2024. I'm seeing so many varieties of variegated alocasia. It always makes me wonder where do all of these variegated plants come from? Are they manufactured in a lab? Are they tissue cultured? I'm just not sure. But you can see right here, this is an alocasia jacqueline. I will say based on my experience, Alocasia jacqueline's are very difficult to grow. They've got beautiful leaves, like look at how gorgeous the leaves are, but they're a very finicky plant. I don't even know how to bring it joy because mine ended up pretty much dying. Like I think there's a little new growth on it, but it was my first casualty of 2024. It just didn't do well for me and I don't know if it's just because it didn't get enough like bright and direct light either enough humidity or maybe i overwatered it but it was in a self-watering planter so i don't see how it could have been overwatered. nice looking alocasia jacqueline that's actually a very um, big one from what i've seen and then we've got another alocasia right over here you know more neon colored foliage and then we've got alocasia cupria right over here you can see all of those dark purple you know purple leaves very nice looking i always find cupria though alocasia cupria as like being very diff being very not difficult but very just dainty and just delicate that's the word delicate um, but you can see this is actually a good looking um, specimen right here this one is for twenty dollars and honestly i would pay twenty dollars for this versus buying an alocasia for 17.74 at a big box store just because they are um, they all look very healthy they don't look like they're damaged and that's the thing that is going to get me in trouble now that i know that um green acres has a bunch of different alocasia it's like you got to collect them all and like right over here is another beautiful looking alocasia love the gray leaves and then this one is foliage assorted so i don't know if this is like an alocasia maharani this one is for 1350 but look at how beautiful the the texture of the leaves are um i like that it's gray it's got like a metallic look about it i love the matte finish on the leaves definitely a nice looking alocasia and right over here we've got i believe an alocasia ninja i already have one of these but alocasia ninja is gorgeous because i like how circular the leaves are they're very round this one's for 30 dollars actually um and i talked to tanya at green acres who was managing this she is actually the buyer of some of these plants and the one thing that was given feedback is that they just wish they could get more plant ids here like this one right here actually has a plant id um, this one is for $13.50, but look at how beautiful that looking, that alocasia is. It kind of um, looks like one of my alocasias in my collection, but again, it's one of those things where once you start with one plant species, like say you get into alocasia, you are tempted to buy different types of alocasia. That's kind of what has hit me, and I am so glad I was able to find me an alocasia um, nebula right over here like look at how gorgeous this is and look at how large it is so I ended up picking up one of these um, I love the, the way the leaves look I love that it's already established and then right over here we have another alocasia um, this is an alocasia I will come back for I need to get my alocasia room aka my guest bedroom in order just because I've got quite a bit of alocasia there um, I definitely want to make sure that the humidity levels remain high and I am able to get um, some more bright indirect light right now it is um, most of the alocasia are facing a north facing window and then right over here we've got some more alocasia mickey mouse um, mine is doing okay I ended up getting it from a local plant nursery called famous in oregon and then right over here we've got another alocasia um i actually found that actually at home depot for a better price um right over here we've got the alocasia mickey mouse this one's for 20 dollars but it is a nice looking alocasia the leaves remind me of like the stingray but it's super cute as well love 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 the variegation let me know my plant foldies if you've been able to grow alocasia like do you have an alocasia mickey mouse um, i think it's super cool i love the variegation it's not really as finicky as what people say i think alocasia once they become a little bit more established are not as difficult to grow now this is one that i want to get this is an alocasia watsonii um, lightning 
So this one's for $13.50. That is not a bad price at all. And you can see that the veining has like lightning. I love the, the look of it. And it's one that I am definitely going to come back for it for $13.50. That is not a bad price for the alocasia. And the thing about alocasia, my plant foldies is they will reproduce and grow and propagate itself. They will be, you know, little babies that sprout that you can separate from the mother plant. Like this is another alocasia I like. I like that it's a dark foliage. This one is an alocasia anturo for $27.50. Um, this is more of an uncommon alocasia. I do like the, um, the texture of the leaves, but more so I love that it's a dark foliage plant. And I do want to show you how large alocasia can potentially get. So nice looking alocasia table. Definitely a fan. So happy that I'm able to find it. And then here you guys go. This is for my Hoya heads or my Hoya lovers. So for Kathy, one of my plant foldies who's out in Canada, this is for you. I'm going to show you different types of um, Hoyas. This one is for $27.50. I'm not 100% sure what that Hoya is. What I do know is I like the leaf shape and the variegation. And then right over here, we've got some Hoya Compacta. We've got another type of Hoya right over here. This is a Hoya Crimson Queen. Look at that nice looking Hoya as well. It is a little bit sun stressed. You can see some of the pink on it. And then these variegated Hoya Compactas are really nice as well. This one is for $13.50. I am looking for a variegated Hoya Compacta um, or Hindu rope. I know that Costa Farm supposedly has released some um, hanging baskets of that. I have yet to find it at a big box store, but when I do, I will grab it and buy it immediately. So look at all of these Hoyas. Now with Hoyas, they definitely do better um, with bright indirect light actually the more light you give it the better coloration these hoyas will get um, the types of bugs that they are most prone to would be mealy bugs and i would say with mealy bugs you definitely want to make sure that you take care of them but look at this right over here look at that that coloration you definitely want to do take care of um, any mealy bug infestations with your hoyas especially with hoya compacta because they get in all of the grooves and it just become more difficult to take care of and get rid of but you can see that Green Acres has a lot of Hoyas. And then we've also got some ZZ plants there. And then we've got some more hanging baskets of Hoyas right over here. So I'm gonna take some down to show you. Let's see what this one is. Now, I don't have all the plant IDs for these. These are assorted Hoyas, but look at this one. Love the variegation of this particular one. Very nice looking um, hanging basket. And that one was for $13.50. What else do we have right over here? Now look at this very full and lush Hoya hanging basket. I don't know what type of Hoya this is. All I know is look at how gorgeous the leaves are. And I love the maroon outlining of the, the waxy leaves that I am a huge fan of that. And we've got some more Hoyas right over here. It's another one that I'm not sure what the Hoya ID is. And then we have some ZZ plants right over here. I love the new growth of ZZ plants. This one's for $13.50 just because they come out with a very green neon color. Looks very healthy and lush. ZZ plants are one of the easiest plants to grow. Um, you just may have to make sure that you don't um, overwater them. And then we've got some more ZZ ravens right over here, the darker foliage. This one is not a bad price at all. And you can see that the new leaves um, or the new growth comes from um, with the green color versus just it coming out as a dark raven color i love that it's one of my favorite um zz plants and you can see right here we've got some um foxdale um palm look at how beautiful that is they remind me of like ginkgo biloba leaves and they've got a couple more here i love the leaf shape of that for sure and what else do we have we've got some more hoyas here and actually i was tempted to buy this hoya now if you guys can my plant foldies give me the plant id for this if possible it's a really cute small hanging basket and this one is only for 1350. i may come back for this at some point again if they still have it available but look at the splashes on that hoya i think it's really cute and it's a small hanging basket so it wouldn't be too difficult to hang and actually hoya like to end up being on the drier side this one is for 40 dollars. this hanging basket of hoya but look at how beautiful the um, foliage is look at that variegation the splotchy variegation is absolutely stunning i can't get over the fact that i did not know about this plant nursery 
So it's always exciting for me to feature local plant nurseries in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So if you are a local, we can support these nurseries and actually um, give them more business. Or if you are visiting the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you know where to go find some plants. And then this is another table. This is a table full of string of turtles. We've got different types of peperomia and polia. We've got a huge um, philodendron glodii. I think that's how you pronounce it. Look at how massive that philodendron is. Love that. But what I also love is to show you these um, peperomia guineas. I think I want to get this one because it's got some beautiful um, pink outlining and look at how happy this plant is you can see that it is in bloom really like that a lot and this is only for 775 in a four inch planter so this is a plant i may end up picking up i know i can get this at kroger for 699 but the size and um, health of this plant is just a lot better than what i've seen and then this is a variegated peperomia teardrop for 975 now this is some type of peperomia i'm gonna assume i don't know what it is exactly but this is also for 975 look at the dark foliage i probably should have gotten this one as well i'm just going to take it down here and show you look at how nice that is um, so if you know the plant ID for this particular plant, please leave that in the comments, timestamp it, or let me know in the live premiere chats. You know, plant foldies, you guys are so much fun to interact with when it comes to talking to you guys on the chat. So I just hope you guys continue to talk to each other, engage with me at the live premiere chats. And then right over here, we've got a Syngonium Batik growing up on a totem. I love that. I have some um, Syngonium Batik as well as um, just regular Syngonium. I do love how lush and full this is. This is for $22.50. This is actually a better deal than say at Callaway's Nursery for the same price. And then we've got some more four inch planters right over here. This one is a Syngonium White Butterfly um, right over here. Nice looking Syngonium White Butterfly. Um, it's already starting a trail so you can probably propagate from it. And then this is a Syngonium um, Yano Cardi. Um, this one is for $20. I have some of these growing in my collection as well. Nice looking Syngonium. It's one of the more unique looking Syngonium alongside like a Syngonium Chia Pens. But if you're going to spend $20, you might as well buy this large Syngonium right here. Look at how gorgeous this is on a pole, a totem pole. And for all of this, you can pay this price. It is not a bad price at all to get this much um, Syngonium. You can actually chop it up and propagate multiple ones, but this one's already a fairly established one growing up a totem, so I like that a lot. And you can see how gorgeous these plants are. Like this plant nursery has such a good way of displaying their plants, and I love that they have similar plants that are, um, you know, similar in care tips. Like this one is a Syngonium Three Kings for thirty-five seventy. I have a lot of Syngonium Three Kings. They're very easy to propagate. Actually, I continue to propagate them. Um, I am definitely going to see about maybe giving them away or, you know, sending them to some of my subscribers. And then this one is a Syngonium Pink Perfection. Really nice looking Syngoniums. Again, Syngoniums are one of my favorite plants. They used to be my favorite plant until I realized that sometimes their care isn't as easy as I thought it would be. They are a little bit more prone to like spider mites and mealybugs more so than I thought. But what I like about them is there's such a huge diversity of Syngoniums and they are vigorous growers. Look at this one right here. We've got another Syngonium. And we've got some more Syngonium tree, Three Kings. We've, we've got some Syngonium Milk Confettis right over here. Lots of Syngoniums to look at for sure. And let's see what this Syngonium is right here. More Syngonium Three Kings. So I'll pan out over here and show you what else they have on this table. But look at that Philodendron Glodii, that is massive. And then we've got more Syngoniums. Unfortunately, they don't have plant IDs for these, but this is so thick for $9.75. Look at how much um, you know, foliage you will get for $9.75. So you can definitely tell that um, Green Acres brings in a lot of plants that are super healthy. And that Philodendron Glodii is only for 
$300.25, but that's such a large plant. And then we've got a lot more um, Peperobia Ginnies. This one is actually super full. This was for $9.75, but look at how full and lush this is. And look at that pink outlining across, you know, all around along the um, the leaves. Very nice looking Peperomia. And then I think we have another Peperomia obtusifolia variegata over there. And you can see all against the wall, we've got some ficus lorata, some ficus elastica, and then we've got some more hanging baskets over here. Not 100% sure what these plants are, but they look gorgeous. And then we've got some more ficus lorata over here. We've got a coffee plant. This one is um, not a bad price at all. I do like the, the, the shine and the texture of the leaves of a coffee plant. And we've got a ficus triangularis variegata. Now this is a Chiflera Amato. So I've seen the larger forms, but this one is in a six inch planter. Love the leaves as well, very beautiful looking. And then we've got some Ficus Elastica Taniki right over there. Um, we've got some more Ficus um, Triangularis Variegata. Now this is interesting. So we, here is a Ficus Elastica um, Moonshine or Shiveriana. Look at that. I love the variegation of this um, particular ficus elastica. It was one that was super expensive two to three years ago where you got like a one leaf, one node cutting and you'd have to spend like um, at least $100 if you, if you were lucky. And then right over here, we've got a work of art that is a ficus elastica taniki, more ficus elastica, um, by ficus triangularis variegatas. And then we've got a whole table with... Um, some sago not sago palms ponytail palms different types of palms and dracaena so that's interesting that they've got those two types of plants mixed in a table but nonetheless i love dracaenas they're very underrated plants like right over here is a dracaena marginata but look at how wacky the branching has happened with this um, particular dracaena Marginata, very nice looking Dracaena. And then we've got a Dracaena Lemon Lime or Lemon Surprise. This is for $22.50. Nice looking one. I love the colors of that particular Dracaena. And with that Dracaena, it can tolerate lower light conditions. And then my plant foldies, this seems to be one that you guys like. That is a Dracaena Tornado or um, Hurricane, however one you want to call it. And that one's for $15.50. Um, this is the non-variegated version, but I do like the green on it. Nice looking Dracaena. And then we've got a Dracaena Florida Beauty. These are for $9.75. Not a bad price at all, honestly. Look at how beautiful the variegation is that's speckling on it. It's a definitely a different look for a Dracaena, but nonetheless, it is in the Dracaena family. And you can see that there is an entire table just dedicated to that. And we don't, I haven't seen this often at a big box store. They used to be offered at Lowe's. This is a Dracaena Song of India for $15.50. This is one of the more difficult Dracaenas to grow because it really requires a lot of bright indirect light. If it doesn't get that, it will definitely shed its leaves. It's happened to me before actually. And I'm gonna pan out over here. And now we're gonna walk over here where they have their clearance price um, plants or plants that need a little bit more tender love and joy. These are um, Amidrium Silver Mediums. These are for $18.75. They are half off now, I believe. Nice looking um, Amidriums. I actually think that they're skin daps is when you think about it, but they actually fenestrate as they grow older. And then this one right here is a Philodendron White Princess. Nice looking variegation. We've got some Tradescanthia here, some Cyclobin, some more um, Sansevieria. We've got some Philodendron Pink Princess for $14.25. And these are all priced as Mark. So we're just gonna pass by a couple of these like clearance plants. You can see there's another Philodendron Glo um, Glodii. I believe that's what it is. And we've got some succulent cacti plants. We've got a bunch of um, plants right over here, variegated succulents. I really like that a lot. And when we talk about just diversity of plants and plant content, I'm glad that I'm able to show you different types of plants. Like these are beautiful jades and we've got different types of euphorbia, cacti. Again, I'm not as versed in them, but I did want to show you some cacti. Um, one cacti that I find very fascinating would be these barrel cactus. Look at these right there. And then these are so precious. 
look at how fuzzy those cactus look like but look at how prickly those ones are and then we've got some epipremnum panatum cebu blue polthos i love me some epipremnum panatum cebu blue you can't go wrong with that and then we've got a bunch of modern looking planters so this is kind of more of my vibe i like clean lines very matte finishes they look super cool and then these are some variegated devil's um, backbone for 1550 very easy to propagate as well i would definitely add that into my collection um, I like the look of it. And then we've got some more assorted succulents right over there. Um, what else do we have? Now we have a whole table of Sansevieria or what you would call snake plants. Now, I don't know all of the um, plant IDs of these snake plants, but what I do know is I like these types of snake plants, the ones with the thicker, um, like star starfish looking, looking um, sail Sansevieria versus the Trifasciata. I think that's what you would call it, the, the typical snake plants right here. There are a lot to choose from. A lot of people say that snake plants are easy to, to care for. I think they're easy to care for because they can tolerate lower light conditions, but the watering can sometimes um, be a little bit more tricky. And I'm just going to walk over here again and show you some more of the Alocasia. This is an Alocasia Silver Dragon right next to the Alocasia Mickey Mouse. Um, I like this one as well. This is an Alocasia sarion. That is the juvenile form of what you would see. The bigger one is right up here. Look at that. That's how large they could get. And that's the thing about plants. You know, whenever we go big box store plant shopping, we end up with like starter plants like this. But over time, they mature and grow. Um, I am curious to see how large like a Alocasia Ninja would be and an Alocasia Watsani Eye Lightning, how large that these Alocasia would get. And then obviously look at how large that Philodendron um, Glodii is. And then there's just so many different tables and shelves full of plants. I love that green um, acres is very spacious. Um, there's just a lot of plants to choose from and they're super healthy. I did want to pan over here again and just show you a little bit close-ups on the Philanopsis orchids and then um, just how much they cost. So that's the price for those orchids. Um, it makes you want to get orchids. This whole um, nursery greenhouse actually gives you like tropical vibes, which is what I love. And I can catch myself coming over to Irving a little bit more frequent just to go see these plants. I am a little bit nervous um, plant foliage just because I already know I'm going to blow my um, my plant budget if I'm not careful. But I'm thinking about getting an, um, an anthurium here and, uh, you know, putting it in a hydroponic situation just because they have roots. Like, look at this. This one is actually in Lekka with some like um, some uh i think orchid bark but you can see there are several different varieties of um blooming anthurium here i saw one that was like pink that i want to get and then maybe a purple one but look at this dark foliage one right here so i'm all about the dark foliage plants this one's for 1350. i am thinking about getting a couple of anthurium and actually putting them in hydroponic situations because when you look at their roots closely they're very thick they almost remind me of um aglonema roots and i just think that that would be a cool um addition to how I would display my plants indoors. And look, they've got a couple of indoor azalea or azalea semsei. This one is for $13.50. That's not bad at all for these indoor azaleas. I've got three so far and I got them for such good prices. I'm hoping that I can grow them successfully indoors and perhaps propagate them. And when I propagate them, my plant foldies, especially if you are in the United States, I might end up doing giveaways of some of my plant propagations and sending them out. There's a lot of um, ideas I want to do for my channel. But, you know, as far as just looking at the plants, look at this absolutely stunning i love that epiprenum panatum um cebu blue and just a huge alocasia here so if you haven't already please make sure you guys are liking this video hitting the subscribe button if you're not subscribed to my channel and then definitely following me on instagram at growfold also follow um at green acres so you can be up to date with what's going on in their nursery 
And then finally, I just want to show you this tread scanthia here. This one I don't often see, but look at how beautiful the variegation is on this tread scanthia. I definitely want to get this type of tread scanthia versus just the regular purple one. I love the nanook, but look at how beautiful the variegation is on this. This would be very easy to propagate. I actually have a tread scanthia that I've been propagating and getting fuller. It's growing in Lekka. And I just want to go walk over here and just show you some more of these beautiful plants. Look at that. Look at that philodendron bilitii. Um, bilitiae, bilitia, however you pronounce it. And they just um, started watering these. And we've got some philodendron gloriosums right over here. Now we're back indoors. I just wanted to show you some of their planters. Love these grape um, pots. It's more of my vibe. I love these spherical cylinder pots as well. Look at that. I have a couple of them in my um, collection. I actually have those specific ones. And that's really the kind of planters and look I like. I love neutral plant uh, planters. Look at these right over here, the grays. I love that um, cylinder one. Um, let me know in the, the comments if you guys like these type of planters or do you like more color. And I did want to walk over here and just show you the plant bar. And then, um, you know, we'll be ending this video um, soon. But you can see that they've got um, a philodendron silver sword right over here. They've got a um, Epipreno Panat, um, Ari, I'm sorry, Neon Pothos. Um, they've got a different type of trellis for some Philanopsis orchids. And these are some of the plantings that they've done. They've got a nice um, anthurium. This one's actually nice. I like the dark foliage. A syngonium, some pink syngonium. I love pink plants. And they've got some aglonemas right over here. So they've got some like planting arrangements for this planting bar. I love that. And then they've got another um, Philanopsis orchid on a heart trellis, a ficus um, elastica altissima, and then this is what it, the indoor section looks like in terms of just the plant supplies and obviously that is my cart but anyways i hope you plant foldies really enjoyed my um, local plant nursery tour of green acres i will be coming back to show you guys the outdoors but i couldn't help myself showing you guys the indoor tropical plants catch you on the next one bye